are hip thrusts better than squats when it comes to glute growth? Well, stick around and find out. I'm gonna cover a paper from 2023 that answers this question. Get excited, folks. We might have a game changer glute exercise on our hands. For years, the barbell hip thrust has dominated as the go-to booty building exercise and backed by rock solid science as well. But hold on to those barbells because there is a twist. Despite their widespread popularity and claims of glute supremacy, a recent 2023 study might just have a different story to tell. So let's take a look at this study and uncover the truth about your booty building regimen. This study published in June of last year involved 34 untrained males and females. Untrained was defined as not having consistently engaged in resistance training for more than once per week over the past five years. The participants aged between 18 and 30 were then divided into two distinct training groups. The squat group who followed a resistance training program consisting of two sessions per week of three to six sets of barbell back squats and the hip thrust group who also followed a resistance training program consisting of two sessions per week, three to six sets of barbell hip thrusts. The program was progressive in nature, with individuals performing only one session in the first week of each of the described exercises, followed by two sessions in the weeks to follow. So essentially in week one, only three sets were performed, in week two, four sets were performed, and in weeks three to six, the participants performed five sets, and by week seven through nine, the participants performed six sets for each of the described exercises. All of the sets performed were in the eight to 12 repetition range with each set taken to failure. Both groups followed their respective training programs for nine weeks with each of the sessions supervised by a trained research assistant. So what were the researchers interested in measuring and how? Well, they were interested in measuring the differences in glute muscle activation, changes in muscle size of the glutes, as well as differences in muscular strength between the two exercises. Electromyography, also abbreviated EMG, served as the technique to measure the glute muscle activation, which the authors note as providing valuable insight into predicting long-term muscle hypertrophy outcomes. However, it is crucial to highlight that recent studies have exercised caution when attempting to extrapolate muscle growth solely from EMG data. Growth of the glutes was measured through cross-sectional muscle thickness of the right glute using MRI. MRI is considered one of the most accurate and reliable methods for measuring changes in muscle thickness due to its ability to measure high quality images of soft tissue and muscle architecture. Strength was measured through a three rep max testing on the back squat, the barbell hip thrust, the barbell deadlift, as well as an isometric wall push. Initial testing was carried out two days before the intervention started, with the final test being carried out 72 hours after the intervention concluded, and this was very strategic in helping offset potential water retention and inflammation in that post-training setting. After analyzing EMG amplitude, it was found that all sites exhibited higher EMG values during the hip thrust compared to the squat exercise. So at first glance, this might suggest a potential for greater muscle growth with the hip thrust. However, despite these differences in EMG amplitude in the hip thrust, the changes in muscle CSA measurements revealed no significant differences between the two exercises. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the quadriceps and the adductor hypertrophy were significantly greater in the squat group, while the hamstring growth was similar across both conditions, which was negligible between groups. Now, in terms of strength gains following the three rep max testing, it's not surprising that the squat group demonstrated more significant improvement in their three rep max squat, while the hip thrust group exhibited greater enhancements in their hip thrust three rep max. Now, this outcome probably aligns with our expectations given the specific focus of each training program on their respective exercises. So what were the exact percentage increases? So the back squat three rep max increased by 17% in the hip thrust group, and by 44% in the squat group, while the hip thrust strength group increased by 63% in the hip thrust group and 34% in the squat group. For the deadlift three rep max and the wall push up, both tests saw improvements with little to no difference between groups. Now, for those who might be interested in the carryover of these two exercises to the deadlift and the wall push, the deadlift increased by 15% in the squat group and by 16% in the hip thrust group. 
the wall press increased by 7.6% in the squat group and by 10% in the hip thrust group. So what does this mean for you and I? Well, drawing from these findings, it seems that the widely acclaimed barbell hip thrust may not be quite as superior for glute hypertrophy as commonly advocated by coaches and influencers. But please stick around for the discussion and the limitations of this study, as there are definitely some important talking points worth mentioning, making these findings a little less compelling. Although the hypertrophy results leaned slightly more towards hip thrust in terms of glute growth, upon closer examination of the data, the differences between the groups were rather insignificant. Additionally, there was no meaningful contrast in strength outcomes. So this data challenges the prevailing notion that the hip thrust unequivocally outperforms the back squat in both hypertrophy and strength gains. But let's not forget about the limitations of the study. A notable limitation of this study's design is the absence of a control group, which could have enhanced the reliability of these results. Taking a slightly more granular look at the individual data, given the wide degree of variability observed in the measurement data, I personally find it a little difficult to believe that multiple individuals experienced muscle loss in both the upper and middle glute CSA of the folks in the hip thrust group, as indicated on the graph illustrated on the screen. Incorporating a control group would have provided an additional data set for comparing the muscle growth, or lack thereof, observed within this study. Although I don't have any empirical data to support this claim, it's plausible that as the glutes become more accustomed to higher resistance training volumes, they may benefit from a more targeted and isolated approach. Although it's important to keep in mind that these findings can't be extrapolated or generalized to a trained population these results pertain to an untrained individual only. So does this mean that we should just forget about the hip thrust? Absolutely not. These findings simply underscore the value of incorporating both the squat and the hip thrust exercise into your resistance training program. So if you are somebody who finds yourself leaning more towards one of these exercises over the other, then rest assured by way of these study findings, you are not hindering your progress in terms of hypertrophy or strength development when it comes to my favorite muscle group to train, the glorious glutes. One important side note, which might be important to highlight for some listeners, if your primary aim is to prioritize your glute hypertrophy while minimizing quadricep hypertrophy, is that the hip thrusts are the optimal choice for achieving these specific goals. So what are my key takeaways from this paper? There is more than one exercise you can include in your resistance training program to elicit hypertrophy in your glutes. But remember, this is just one study which was carried out in untrained individuals. So do not be deceived by what you hear on social media when it comes to growing bigger glutes. Muscle growth boils down to a range of different training variables extending far beyond individual exercise selection. I know I certainly won't be throwing away the barbell hip thrust or any variation of this exercise anytime soon. And for many reasons, well beyond the scope of this video. Now, if you'd like to learn more about all things hypertrophy so you can maximize your growth outcomes across all your favorite muscle groups, then grab a copy of my new book, The Complete Exercise Guide to Muscle Hypertrophy, which provides an in-depth breakdown on just about every aspect of resistance training related to muscle hypertrophy. Check out the links in the description below if you're watching this video on YouTube or head over to my Instagram bio where you can find details about all my evidence-based products and services. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.